Welcome to uh, section 7.6 and uh, for section 7.6 we're going to be looking at probability with combinations and permutations and to uh, start off uh, this lesson we're going to review some of the concepts from section 6.1, 6.2 and 6.4 so, uh, so let's get started. Alright so we're going to start off with a review for permutations and combinations so uh, permutations uh, refers to the number of ways a group of objects can be arranged such that the order is important. So uh, the formula that we used for permutations was n pick r, which is n factorial divided by n minus r all factorial. So n is the number of choices and r, are the, r is the number of objects to, to permute. There you go. And for combinations, uh, this refers to the number of ways a group of objects can be arranged such that the order is not important. So uh, this is the notation that we use for a combination, n choose r, n choose r, and that's going to be n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r all factorial. And r is the number of objects chosen, and n minus r is the number of objects not chosen. All right, so there, there's my uh, formula right there for combinations. Now, going back to uh, permutations here, um, you know, the order is important. So if I have two students like A and B, Alice and Brad, um, if I, if I want to rearrange Alice and Brad, I could have Alice and Brad, or I could have Brad and Alice. So uh, those are two different ways that you can um, that you can, uh, those are two different permutations right there where the order is important. However, for a combination, um, the order is not important. So um, if I send Alice and Brad to the office, that's pretty much the same thing as sending Brad and Alice to the office. So even though you rearrange the order, um, the order um, is not important. It still counts as just one group. Because uh, if you think about it, if, I, if, if Mr. Yoon sends two students to the office, A and B, I mean that's the same. That's that's not really different than sending B and A to the office. So the order is not important. Now before we move on, uh, this formula n choose r we can write this in a different way. So if I have n choose r, that's the same thing as n factorial divided by you know this expression right here. And we know that this part of the formula right here, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Uh, that's the same thing as uh, this situation here above, which is n pick r. So this could be uh, n pick r divided by r factorial. And uh, this is a, another formula that we can use when we're dealing with combinations. All right, now that we've uh, reviewed uh, the formulas for permutations and combinations, let's do a few more uh, review problems. Example, uh, with a deck of 52 cards, how many five card hands are possible? All right, so that's simply gonna be 52, choose five, because we have 52 cards and we're choosing five of them. So that's gonna be uh, around uh, 2,598,960 hands. Uh, next example, um, a flush contains all five cards with the same suit. How many flush cards are there? All right, so a flush, a flush contains all five cards with the same suite. Okay, so this is going to be, um, if I consider the spades here, uh, that's going to be 13 choose five. Uh, because there's 13 spades and I want five of them, uh, that would give me a flush. And then I need to consider the other categories. I have spades and then I have hearts, so I have 13 hearts. And I want to choose five of them because that would give me a flush. And then I do that for the clubs as well as the diamonds. And then I'll get a total of uh, 5,148 hands. All right. And this, uh, this final example here on this slide is how many hands with at least three spades. So when I say at least three spades, I could have three spades, four spades, or five spades. All right, Because a hand has up to uh, five cards. So um, we need to consider all the cases with three spades, four spades, and five spades. All right, so that's exactly what I said here. We need to consider those cases. We can resort to the bin method. I have 13 spades, and if I want at least three spades, then I should choose three of them. Um, and if I, if I have 13 spades, then that would mean I have 39 other cards, 
And from the 39 other cards, um, I need to pick, sorry, I need to choose two of them because three plus five will give me my five cards. And 13 plus 39, that will give you my 52 cards in the deck. And then I need to consider the case with uh, four spades. So I, I have 13 spades, this time I want to choose four, and from the 39 I want to choose one. And then I need to add this on to the case with five spades. So for my 13 spades, I need to choose uh, five of them, and for my 39 other cards, I will choose zero of them. So I just multiply these together, the bins together, that's the fundamental counting theorem, and then just simply add all the different cases to get the total number of hands. All right, so 13 choose three times 39 choose two. Once again, this is the fundamental counting principle right here. Um, multiply those two guys together and multiply this together and I simply add the different situations. And once I do that, I get a number of 453,024. All right, let's move on. All right, so now that we did a few of those um, combination questions, let's practice a few uh, permutation questions. Uh, five people are in a race, uh, Amy, Ben, Chris, Don, and Ed. Uh, how many different outcomes are possible? Okay, so in this case, the order would matter. So we have five people, and if I want to arrange those five people, um, then the fastest way to do that is just simply going to be five factorial. Uh, you could also do 5 pick 5, which is uh, if you apply the formula, it's the same thing as 5 factorial, so that should give you 120 different ways. Uh, th th the next example, if only 1st, 2nd, and 3rd places are taken, uh, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, that's simply going to be 5 pick 3, and that's going to be uh, roughly 60 different ways. 60 ways. And the last example here, given the letter swoosh, uh, how many permutations are possible? All right, so this question is one of those standard um, you know, word problems where we have some repeating letters. So we need to count the, no the total number of uh, letters in this word. And then we need to look at all the repeating letters and divide them. So I have nine letters. Um, I have three S's. So one, two, three. I have uh, three O's right here. Uh, and I have, uh, I guess, two H's. And uh, this one would represent the W, I'm assuming, but this one here doesn't really matter. Uh, then it's going to be 9 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. And, um, you know, you get some simplifying there, and your final answer is going to be uh, 5,040. All right, now that we've uh, reviewed some basic permutation and combination questions, uh, let's combine that now with probability. So when solving probability with counting principles involved, uh, we need to first find the total number of desired outcomes and then divide it by the total number of possible outcomes. So once we uh, divide, uh, that turns the problem into a probability situation. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples again. Uh, what is the probability of being dealt the following five card hands? Um, I want to flush with spades. And, uh, and the second question will be, I want a full house with three kings and two aces. All right, so what is the probability of being dealt the following five card hands? Okay, so step number one is we need to find the total number of desired outcomes. Okay, so I want to flush with spades, and um, these are five card hands. So I flush with spades. Okay, well that's simply going to be uh, 13 choose 5. Remember spades, I have 13 spades, and I want to pick five of them. Five, five spades will give me a flush. So that's the first step. Find the total number of desired outcomes. So I have 13 spades. And uh, I need five of the same. I need five spades in order to get a flush. So thirteen choose five, and then I divide it by the total number of possible outcomes. Well, when you're de when you're taking out five cards from a deck of fifty-two, that's simply going to be fifty-two choose five. And then you would want to go to your calculator and calculate these values. And here are some side calculations. Here, thirteen choose five is one thousand two hundred eighty-seven. Fifty-two choose five is going to be um, you know over two million. And when you divide those two numbers, uh, you'll get a very small number of 0 0.000495. So a very small percent. 
Uh, question number B, I want a full house with three kings and two aces. All right, so I want to find the probability of getting three kings and two aces. All right, well, how many kings do I have? Uh, I have four kings in a deck, and I want three of them, so that's simply going to be four choose three. And then how many aces do I want? Oh, sorry, how many aces do I have in a deck? Well, I have four aces in a deck, and I only want two of them, so that's simply going to be four choose two. And then I will divide by the total number of possible outcomes. And once again, we are just taking five cards from we're taking five cards from a standard deck of 52. So I'll divide everything by 52, choose five. And when I do that, I get a number, um, that's a very small number gain, 0 0.00009234. Moving on to the next uh, examples here. Uh, this time I am taking out four cards. Uh, so we're not taking out five cards anymore. We're, we'll be taking out four cards. It's drawn from a deck. Uh, what is the probability of not getting any diamonds? All right, so we want the probability of not getting any diamonds. So we want the probability of four uh, not diamonds, and we can break that up by doing 39 choose four. Now there's 13 diamonds in a deck of cards, so if we don't want any of those diamonds, we remove those 13 diamonds from the deck of 52 cards, and then we have we would have 39 other cards left and from those 39 other cards we, we want to choose four of them because we want to pick four cards and then we'll divide that by the total number of outcomes or sorry the total number of possible hands which is 52 cards in a deck choose four um, so these are 39 cards that are not diamonds and we want to choose four cards from a deck of 52 and then once I do that, um, I can compute the individual com combinations here. That's going to be 82,251. Uh, 52 choose 4 is going to be uh, 270,725. We simply divide those numbers and we'll get 0 0.3038. All right, so the probability of not getting a, any diamonds is uh, 0 0.3038. All right, so uh, question number B. What is the probability of getting at least one diamond? All right, so we want at least one diamond when we're drawing four cards from a deck. Um, now, in order to do this question, the fastest way to do this question is probably, use, probably to use the complement to find this probability. So if, if I want the probability of at least one diamond, basically um, I, would count, I would calculate the probability for one diamond, for two diamonds, plus three diamonds, plus four diamonds. And once I add up all these different probabilities, then I would get the probability of at least one diamond. Now doing this would actually take a long time. So, uh, but instead of uh, computing all four of these probabilities, you could use the complement situation here. And that's simply gonna be one minus the probability of not getting any diamonds. So if you calculate the probability of not getting any, any, any diamonds and doing one minus that, that will give you the probability of having at least one diamond. So the probability of at least one diamond here is equal to the complement, which is one minus the probability of, of, of not getting any diamonds. Now the good thing is we've actually calculated this probability in the previous problem, which is 0 0.3038, and I simply do one minus that, and that's gonna give me 0 0.696. All right, let's move on to uh, the next question. And 0 0.696 is pretty high. It's about almost 70%. All Moving on to the next uh, practice questions. Um, what is the probability of getting a five card hand with three hearts and two spades? Now, when you're dealing with these kind of problems, you could definitely draw the buckets and uh, separate the two different categories here. But um, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. But if you want to, that's a good way to organize organize these two situations. So I want the probability of three hearts and two spades. Well, how many hearts do we have in a standard deck of 52 cards? We have 13 hearts, and we also have 13 spades. So this will be uh, 13 choose three. And this will be 13 choose 2, all divided by 52 choose 5. So once again, there are 13 hearts 
in a deck of cards and I want three of them, which is where that three comes from. And for spades, I also have 13 and I want to choose two of them because I want two spades divided by 52 cards in the deck and I'm always and I'm choosing five in this case. This is a five card hand. And then I would just go to my calculator and then I would get 0 0.008583. Uh, question B, what is the probability of getting a seven card hand with four red cards and three spades? All right, so for this question, I have a seven card hand, which is different from the five card hand. So when I divide, it will be, um, instead of dividing by 52 choose five, I'll be dividing by 52 choose seven. All right, so uh, I want four red cards and three spades. All right, so this is very similar to the previous problem. Uh, how many red cards do I have? Well, half the cards in the deck are red, so uh, 52 divided by 2, that's going to be 26. I have 26 red cards, and I choose four of them. And for three spades, uh, very similar to the two spades, this is going to be 13 spades, choose three. All right, so the probability of four red and three spades, uh, 26 red cards, and I want four of them, times 13 spades, and I want three of them, all divided by 52 cards in the deck, choose seven, because I have a seven card hand this time go to your calculator and you get 0 0.03196 which is at 3.196 percent all right example number C uh, what is the probability of getting four spades two hearts and one club from a seven card hand all right so the probability of four spades two hearts one club uh, very similar to these previous problems we're just extending it now uh, so for spades, I still have 13, so 13 choose 4. For hearts, I still have 13, and I want to choose 2 of them. And for clubs, I have 13 clubs, and I want to choose 1 of them, so 13 choose 1, all divided by 52 choose 7, because we have a 7 card hand again. And this is simply going to be 0.54196%, uh, so very small. All right, let's move on. In this next example, I have uh, 12 horses in a race with first, second, and third places. Uh, what is the probability that someone will get all three horses in the correct order? Okay, so if you want the correct order, um, you know, order will definitely matter. So in this question, this will be a permutation. So uh, I want the probability of getting first, second, and third right. And since this is a permutation, I have 12 horses, then I will pick three of them. 12 pick three will give me um, the correct order. But in that order, only one of those situations will be correct. So it should be one divided by 12 pick three. So we only have one correct outcome from 12 pick three. And this represents the situation because order matters, so it's a permutation. All right, so if we have 12 pick three, that will give us all the different outcomes. But from all those different outcomes, only one of those will be correct. So it'll be one divided by the total number of outcomes. All right, so for the second question, um, it's very similar. I have horses. So if the order of the horses is not taken into uh, account, uh, what is the probability that someone will correctly get all three horses right? All right, so for this question, um, you know, the order will not be important. So uh, we're not going to be dealing with a permutation anymore. We're going to be dealing with a combination. So um, for this question, all we have to do is uh, 12 choose 3 and then 1 divided by that. So the probability of 3 horses, that's going to be 1 divided by 12 choose 3. Uh, once again, we only have one correct outcome. And this will be, uh, the order will not matter, so we can just do 12 choose 3, and that will give us a final answer of uh, 1 over 220.